next one is going to be R. And you guys know who the Godfather is. It's not personal it's business. So R is going to be ruthless. It's supposed to come out better than that, but you got converted. <laughs> so, anyways, Mac, PC, they all suck, right? <laughs> um, anyways, your ruthlessness approach keeps you driven. Uh, so, your drive determines your ruthlessness. All right, and so something to think about is what are you willing to give up to win at all costs? You know, um, for myself, I gave up friends, I gave up fun. I mean, I was 27 years old when I opened my business. All right, that was prime time to go meet ladies. That was prime time to go drinking. Seriously, I never saw a lady in my life until I met my wife. <laughs> <It's a joke. laughs> But in reality, I gave up a lot of stuff. I was putting in a ton of hours. My friends had to come into my gym and say, dude, you need to get out of man. It's Saturday night, Let's just, just go get a drink. And I was like, fine, just one drink and then I come back and go back to work. But I had no fun. But there's a reason behind that, because I had an end goal, all right? The next thing is, what are you willing to sacrifice for your wants? So, um, I know a couple of quick little stories, but one of them is, is that the whole cable thing, it's funny you said that, um, is that, um, when I was a kid, when I joined martial arts, my dad was like, cool, you're gonna do martial arts, we're getting rid of cable. And I was like, what the hell? I was like, why are we getting rid of cable? He was like, because if you want something, you gotta give something else up. I was like, fine, whatever. And as a kid, when you're 10, that's a big deal, you know? When I first start, started my business in 2008, uh, I had a dog, his name was Bo, he was a boxer. And um, awesome, awesome dog. Uh, he was my first dog, I put him down two years ago, which was probably the most horrible thing you could ever experience, in my opinion. But um, on Sundays, I had to go drop off my dog at my sister's, okay? And then I would work 80 hours a week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I was putting in eight hours at my sales job that was paying my bills, and then eight hours at the studio that was not paying anything. Everything was being reinvested, right? And I did that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday night got done, and I go pick up my dog, I go hang out by my sister, and you go talk, and then, and you might be thinking, it's just your dog. It's not just your dog, man. I mean, that's like, that's, that's, that's your, like your support system. So the thing is, is that you gotta sacrifice certain things for what you're really trying to achieve. Um, the next thing is, have you guys ever heard this quote, burn the fucking ship if you wanna take over the island? So my boss told me this whenever I was in the uh, process of quitting my job, all right? So I was getting a review, my annual review, and I kept getting push, pushed off and delayed, all right? And I was like, oh, this is not gonna be good. And then the, the review was with the HR manager, and I was like, oh, this is gonna be horrible. And, and then they were like, you know, you're a bad employee, like you have the best sales numbers, however, you don't wanna do what everyone else is you know, trying to do, like you're not a team player. I'm like, well, you know, I've been running a business for the past uh, 12 months. They're like, what? Like, yeah, I've been running a business for the past 12 months, I'm a little, you know, tired. They're like, all right, and then so, anyways, long story short, my boss basically said, he's like, this is really cool, man. Because we were butting heads at the time. And he, and he literally got down to my level. He's like, you need to do this. You need to run with this. He's like, you need to burn the fucking ship and take over the island. You can't have a net. You can't have anything to be like, but what if I, what if I you know, kind of feel I got this here? If you want to take that island, you better burn it. You better burn that ship. Because you've got nothing else to do but to succeed. When I was 27 years old, my whole thing was this. I got my 30s and make up all my money. Seriously. So I was like, you know, whatever. So, is your ruthless behavior your legacy? I think so. To succeed, you need to compete and you need to dominate. And I'm dead serious about this. This guy, we all know him for his six rings and how great he was. Did you guys know what it took him to get to where he was? There was a team that always destroyed him every single season. Detroit Pistons, bad boy Pistons, all right? I mean, to the, like, think about this. Look at Michael Jordan when he was drafted, what, 86, 84, I forget. Okay, all right, skinny, right? All right, top player, rookie of the year, MVP. And like, whenever he got to the playoffs, the Detroit Pistons, they're like, you're nothing. You're soft. And they broke him down. Seriously, they broke him down, all right? To the point where you, when you see Jordan now, in the days that he was winning, he's thick. Why? Because he was hitting the, the, the gym. He was working. He was working on his game. As soon as he won that, that one series against the Pistons, it changed. Okay, completely changed. That was a game changer. But we don't see that. We see what Jordan did. 
You gotta have this ruthless behavior the entire time to stay hungry. How many people do you know that are like, you reach a goal and all of a sudden you're like, all right, I'm good. People say that, we all do that. I mean like, how many back-to-back -back Super Bowl championships are, have they been? How many back-to-back -back NBA championships have they been? Like, there's not a lot, because the behavior, like, well, I've already achieved the goal, I'm, I'm good. Some people don't stay that way. So, there's this quote, <laughs> you, guys, you guys have probably heard it already. You better hide your kids, you better hide your wife, you better hide your business with this guy. You guys know who this is? Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Wonderful, all right? What's his, what's his tagline? You're dead to me. So my thing on Friday nights, after I teach my last class, come home, you know, put my son to bed, because my daughter's already sleeping, get dinner, and then we'll sit down, we'll be watching uh, Shark Tank. Love it, love the show. If you don't watch Shark Tank and you're an entrepreneur, you need to be watching this. Not because of the new innovations that people are coming up with, but the way that these people have this passion for what they're doing, and then the how sharks think. I mean, literally, you gotta watch it. This is his quote, business is war. I go out there, I wanna kill the competitors, I wanna make their lives miserable, I want to steal their market share, I want them to fear me, and I want everyone on my team thinking we're going to win. It, that is dead awesome. That is the attitude that you need to have running a business to be successful. Seriously, and if you're thinking, well that's a little overborn. Um, that's why he's a multi-billion dollar, uh, that's what he's worth, and we're not. It's the mentality. All right, so how to be a ruthless success? You gotta lick your wounds, get the hell up, and keep fighting. I mean, we've seen that Rocky video, you know, on YouTube all the time, it's the same thing. I remember whenever I first opened my gym in our new location. Um, so we've been in our location for 2005, and then, um, I'm sorry, two, for, for five years, and then we moved into a new location in 2012, 2013, and what happened is, is that before then, I had, had a, hired a trainer, and she was responsible for growing the fitness business while I was responsible for growing the martial arts business. And so, it was going you know, fine, whatever. Um, our son was born five weeks early, which was scary as heck for us. I had just opened my business in that location in June. My son was born in July. We had just moved into a house in July. Eight days before, after we moved in, our son was born, and then two months later, my employee quit. Sucked. You're talking about like not knowing what to do, you gotta get your shit together and figure it out. Because no one cares. Nobody does. Your excuses, who cares? It's the same excuse as the other dude over there. What are you gonna do about it? And that's what you gotta do. You just gotta get up, all right? My stories sometimes, they're not very fun and appealing, but the thing is, is that everyone has that. Another thing is acknowledge your competition, but that is it, all right? They are in the way from you being successful. All right? I don't look at my competition and be like, oh, they're tough. I mean, when was the last time Bill Belichick gave respect to their team that they were competing against? Seriously, when was the last time he did that? Never, which is why they keep winning Super Bowls. All right? Because they acknowledge that they're there, they know what they have to do, and then they still beat them because they have what their plan is. This is how we execute. This is how we play. All that. 